Hey everyone, this is Misfit from the Co-op Guys, back with some more Factorio. Today is going to be a lot of number crunching. Um, I have... What have I done? I have let this build up our research packs, and I've even done a bit of research as well. Uh, I got up to Bullet Upgrade 5 just to get it out of the way. Um, I did a couple of other things, I think. Nothing too major. I also got Speed Modules 3. Um, this is the big ones. This is like the most powerful speed module you can get, the most fit, the one that you really want to use the most. It's also the, one of the most expensive things in the bloody game. And uh, <coughs> speed module threes are essential for our next level of armor and for rocket defense. And if we look at, uh, if we look at the next armor, power armor mark two. This is the best armor you can get in the game. You need to have. Speed Modules 3 and Efficiency Modules 3 researched because they are required in making the armor itself. They need five of each. Um, and then the Rocket Defense needs Speed Modules and Productivity Modules and it needs 50 of each. Now, one of the goals that I have, and it doesn't sound like much, is that if I put down an assembler Speed Module 3 takes 60 seconds to craft, and in this Assembler 2 it will probably take 80 because it, require, it crafts at 3 quarters of speed. And yeah, so it takes 60 seconds to craft and it takes 4 Speed Module 2s, 5 Advanced Circuits, 5 Processing Units, and an Alien Artifact. Um, my goal is to produce one of them continuously. So one of them every 60 or 80 seconds. That doesn't sound like much. But let's go through the numbers here. So, I set up a little demonstration down here. Let's say this here is the speed module 3. So, 5 processing units, 5 advanced circuits, 1 alien artifact, right? Now, the processing units, for some reason, on our total raw uh, ingredient thing, show up, don't show up as the, the raw components for some reason. I think it's because of the sulfuric acid. Um, but, a processing unit takes a lot. Um, just well, trust me on that. So let's see. Uh, in fact, we'll start from the other side. A speed module one takes five advanced circuits and five electronic circuits. Um, if we look on here, speed module one. Doo -doo 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 -doo, there we go. So our total raw ingredients for one speed module: fifteen iron, thirty-two and a half copper, and ten plastic. Right. Now, for the speed module 2, we need four of them. So we've got these four here. And combine them with an additional five processing units and five advanced circuits, and you will get the speed module 2. So the speed module 2 raw resources are 70 iron, 155 copper, 50 plastic, and some processing units. And you add on the processing units as well. So it becomes up to a considerable amount. And we need four of them for the Speed Module 3. Which means we need 16 Speed Module 1s. Um, now let's just... I've got this written down on paper. Uh, so... Where is it? Where is it? It's on this one, I think. Yep. <coughs> right. So, in total, we need a staggering. Where is it? Where are you going? Right. So, in order to keep, make continuous production, we need to be making 32 processing units every 60. So, well, I've basically got I've I've got the this whole thing narrowed down in batches. So. Crafting time for a, a processing unit, uh, where are you here, is 15 seconds, right? Normally, if I was to make it, but of course I can't make it because I can't handle acid. Um, so, ideally that would be 4 every 60 seconds, but because I'm going to be making them in assembler 2s, it would be 4 every 80 seconds. So, but we don't want 4 in every 80 seconds. In order to make continuous production of our speed module 3s, we need to be making 32 every eight, every 80 seconds. So we're going to need 8 assemblers for them. We only have 4 here, 
So we need to double our uh, generation of processing units. But in order to keep up with that, we need to be making more electronic circuits and advanced circuits. And our advanced circuits are also used in making the modules itself. And again, like everything else, the advanced circuits, they take 8 seconds to craft. In assembler 2, they take 10 and a bit. And we need to be making 180 every 8 seconds. So we're going to need to triple, I think, this setup here in order to keep up with the amount of demand for advanced circuits, which is going to be huge. Um, that's just them. The electronic circuits, we also need a, a massive amount of. Electronic circuits, we need to be making a total of 1080 every 80 seconds. Um, these things are already make electronic circuits pretty quickly. So, we've got eight here. By my math, we only need another two more, and that would actually do it. However, as we've already noticed, the throughput of our copper wire is sometimes barely able to keep up. And if other things are going on, the iron suffers for it too. So, we need to up our copper cable count. And we need a total of... So, the amount of copper cable we need to be making every... 80 seconds is 5,520. Uh, so <laughs> we need a few more assemblers for that. We've got 16 here. Another 8 should do it. Um, so, and all of that will be consuming 2,880 copper plates. So let's just run through the final resource tally because um, I actually worked it out without looking at the. Uh, the raw resources because the raw resources here is a bit off considering that it doesn't take into account anything petroleum based <coughs> so that says the raw resources are 290 iron 645 copper one alien artifact 210 plastic and 25 processing units now my math here converting the plastic and the processing units into raw resources has uh, tallied this final result every 80 seconds we are going to be needing 360 coal, 750 petroleum, 1,200 iron, and 2,880 copper every 80 seconds. And that makes one of those things. In total, we need about... Uh, where is it? We need five of each of them, and... 50 each of them, so 100 and 110 total. Now the speed module, believe it or not, is actually the cheaper of the three. Um, if I look at the productivity module, it actually requires five productivity module twos as opposed to four, like the speed module three. Um, and the same goes for the efficiency module, I believe. Yep, it requires more as well. So those are actually got even higher costs. <laughs> And our base is just not ready for it. Um, but there, we're getting there. There are not. It's not too much that we need to do in order to get to that point. We need to redo our, co our copper cable and our electronic circuits. We need to expand these. Uh, these ones actually aren't too much of a problem. <coughs> uh, the biggest thing I'm actually worrying about is not the iron or even the, ma the massive amount of copper. It is actually the petroleum. Uh, I'm going to need to sit and let that build up, and I'm also going to need to get some <coughs> some more resources, some more uh, some more oil pretty soon. But I don't think we're producing anything. No, it's just some iron. So we're going to grab this stuff. We're going to grab one of these, and we're going to grab s half of them. That is already going to push our production to the limit. Our iron is going to dwindle, so it's a good thing that what we're going to be working on is our iron. All right, so we're back over at the iron smeltery here, and um, this thing has been working pretty well. However, its throughput needs to be buffed up, because um, <clears throat> whenever we're making the uh, express transport belts, it uses, or even just doing some research, it pushes our iron to the limit a bit, mainly because we're making so many iron gear wheels uh, the, uh, that the 
it sucks in all the iron there and the iron can't get anywhere else and uh, we can't really allow that to happen too much more um, it's we only just turned on the, the production of the express belts so the iron is keeping up okay but once the all these things fully unload and are just re relying on smelting it's going to run into trouble so we're going to help things along by first upgrading to the express belts um, and let's see how fast it takes us we can barely walk against it so it's pretty good it's pretty fast and it will help our little th our throughput here which is what we really want um, oh crap So speed, speeding up uh, the with the how fast the iron is coming out is going to help uh, get to basically deliver the iron a bit faster because there's sometimes where you, the furnaces are are smelting the iron they're holding it in their hands yet they can't actually put it down anywhere because there's not enough room in the belt or the red belt's not moving fast enough this should help that problem but we're also going to need the iron to go in as fast as we can as well. Uh, so we're going to be no, nope, that's not where I wanted it. Upgrading the iron ore belts so that they are that the iron is being fed in as fast as it possibly can too. Um, the only way of actually increasing it beyond this is basically adding multiple belts, which we already did earlier. I don't think we're going to need much more than we already have. Um, but we'll have to see. Um, so give me a sec, I'm going to upgrade all of these belts here and I'll be back with the second step of upgrading our iron smeltery. Ah, this is step two, didn't you, but you didn't see that coming. Okay, with the constant production of our express belts going on as I was upgrading, our oil supply was not replenishing, so I decided to grab a fresh source finally. Expanded the wall out here, added 10 derricks to this really rich pile. Um, so we've got a lot of fresh oil coming in there there was three more over here by the wall if I can get there there we go that I never tapped into plus there was two abandoned way over here which I decided to connect, connect up so we've got 15 new fresh oil sources combined with like, what the 26 depleted ones we've got we are generating more than enough, uh, enough oil so we have a constant production going on and these things are gradually building up as long as they get full before I start making the modules I think we'll be okay these are starting to build up too and uh, <coughs> heavy oil has is, is been is taking a beating because I have been make, using so much lubricant in the express transport belts but I don't think I'm going to be doing that uh, for much longer uh, because it's difficult to tell but I've upgraded pretty much all the ones that are pertinent for the speed modules so the iron here well the, the iron buffer system from the train to the buffer and up to the smeltery is all been ex uh, changed to the express transport belts the same with the copper down here so the delivery of the ore is at its fastest the only thing I haven't done is gone out to the mines and place the express transport belts there um, but these are all done all shiny and blue uh, also wherever the iron and copper was needed along the production line I have also upgraded as well so the iron gear wheels have got the blue transport belts as do the copper wire then I went along and I upgraded the electronic circuit belts so they are gonna deliver as fast as possible so that and the copper wire along here are on blue belts until we get to the advanced circuits down here they are now blue belts too as are the processing units and they carry on to the end of the production line uh, so anything that's necessary to help speed up our production has been done in terms of belts um, the only thing we actually do is increase production um, the, the rate which we're making stuff so the electronic circuits and the copper wire we'll get to in later on but there's something we can do about the ores I mean these these furnaces are pretty quick but uh, 
they're not quick enough. Uh, we need to up the ante a bit. Um, in order to demonstrate this, I'm going to get some research going. Uh, let's just do the productivity module 3, because uh, that should increase the amount of iron gear wheels that are needed. Um, hopefully that will demonstrate this. If not, I'll just grab a whole bunch of iron at the chest. Um, but something we looked into, well, we researched the beginning of last episode, I believe, and we never actually utilised, was beacons. And uh, beacons, very similar to Minecraft beacons, if you ever played that game. Ever heard of it? I don't know. Uh, but basically, a beacon, you place it down in an area, it works kind of like a rope port in a way, it, or, a power, or a substation pylon or something like that except it will affect buildings and what it will do it, it requires power but it will transmit the effect of a module uh, I think it's at 50% though um, so we could put a module in there and we could it will affect all the buildings that are around it now these things all also have module slots and I think they'll stack with each other and we could put modules directly into the furnaces. That's expensive. So why put one module in here and it would only affect that furnace when we could put two in this one and have the effect of one module and apply it to multiple buildings at once. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, what we're going to do, and we need, we're going to need some of those built back on the bar. There we go. Um, we're going to yank out some of this stuff because I did have the beacons in mind when I was planning this out and sh that this spot right here should affect the uh, should affect eight of these uh, eight of these guys all in one go and I can always put them there so that'll affect that. Perfect. Right. So, let's have a look at the smelting speed of our furnace here. Right, take a note of that. Now what I've done, is I've made a whole bunch of these speed module 2's. So let's put one in, and that's taking the power, and it's increased that a little bit. So let's put another one in. So it's increased it a bit. I mean, let's have a look. Uh, energy consumption plus 60%, speed plus 30%. So they are 30% faster. And if we wanted to really crank it up, as I said, we could put the modules directly into the furnace. And it's smelting like crazy. But the, in comparison, this one, a standard furnace, uses 180 kilowatts. This one down here, which is affected only by the beacon, is 288 kilowatts. The one we just added the modules in is over half a megawatt now. Uh, but it's uh, it's pretty quick. But we're not going to do that at the moment anyway, uh, because these mo it took a while for these modules to be made, and they're also pretty expensive. So we're just going to... Have I done something wrong here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. That's fine. For a moment, I thought I had too many furnaces. I wouldn't be able to place these beacons down. Oh, one more. Bam. So these beacons. No, 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 no. All oh, right, there we go. That's what it is. Right. Um. So these beacons are going to help make our furnace setup go thirty percent faster, which should I emphasize the word should bring this iron up to par. I mean, the iron actually is okay. Um, the only real problem I had was going to be with the copper really which is what we should be putting these down to 
In fact, I don't think I've got enough beacons. Oh, I undershot it. <coughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to need some more beacons. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. I'm going to need more of them. So that's going to take a while to build up. And um, making copper wire. Why am I making copper wire? Oh, they need copper cable. Okay, that's bizarre. Um, so this is how we're going to... But it's going to take a lot more power. Uh, but... That's fine, because we're generating a surplus of power at the moment. So we don't necessarily need to worry about power. And if we do have a problem with power, then we'll just uh, plop, plop down a, another couple of arrays, and everything should be hunky-dory. Sorry, I was wondering if that one was a bit too high or not. Um, Alright. Okay, so there's some iron going. We're going to take the rest. We're going to put down, put some down on the copper. Because as I pointed out earlier, copper is the main one that we're going to need a lot of. Um, so as long as we get our copper production up and going, up and running, uh, we should be okay. So all these little steps are all in preparation for the main goal of producing one speed module three every like minute. <laughs> it's it's and even then it will take quite a while to actually gather them all up, all the ones that I need. Um but it's necessary for getting the best armor in the game. Not only that, but also <coughs> the main stuff for actually beating the game, the rocket defense, the whole reason why we're here, why we're on this planet. And that is to kill aliens and to secure a colony, I think? Either that or we they just dumped us off here and like, hey, just survive as long as you can, buddy. We don't really care. Just, just, just go away. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe we are the, <laughs> we're like the oddball of the group and we've just been uh, dumped here. Not expecting to survive, just sort of stranded. Like giving us a fake mission, not expecting us to succeed in any kind of way. And then we come back and succeed, and we're like, oh crap, uh, I kinda didn't mean you to survive. This is awkward. So. Oh, I get my buttons all mixed up. Okay, so I am going to continue with these beacons. Uh, I'll need to wait for more to be made. And I'm going to have to go back in range of the robots so I can resupply, so I can make more speed modules and stuff like that. And then, after this, we will have a look at our circuit production. The advanced, the processing unit, and this stuff here. And we'll try and beef that up a bit. And that will be the final stage that we need to prepare for making... Uh, the module threes. Okay, so after a little bit of finagling, moving stuff around in, in just plain redesigning, uh, I have got the circuit production ready to go. So, <coughs> in order to get continuously produce one of these speed module threes, we need to be making a total of 32 processing units um, every 80 seconds. I've decided that we're going to stay with the assembler, assembling machines too. We're not going to go for three. The The reason for that is that um, listen, one of the one of the speed module threes or whatever uh, they take 60 seconds to make if you're making them. Um, the assembling machine two is make it in 80 seconds. The threes make it in 48. So that is almost almost twice as fast which means we need to make things twice as fast, which means we need resources twice as fast, which means we need greater throughput, and I don't know if our base has enough throughput to do it, despite all the the uh, the changes we've made since we added in our processing units initially. Now, when I put those four assemblers, these are the same four assemblers that we had before, I just moved them a little bit. Um, 
when I hooked them up before, it took the resources of our entire base to run these four. So now we have eight. And eight should be enough to make the 32 that we need in 80 seconds. So let's just uh, turn these on and then I'll hook up the pipes. If I can get over there. There we go. And hook up the sulfuric acid. Our sulfuric acid production should be more than enough. Uh, and we've got a little bit of reserve of oil now, so sh everything should be fine. So they're all chugging away, producing processing units, which is creating a demand on our electronic circuits and our advanced circuits. Speaking of advanced circuits, you've already seen it. Uh, this is our original advanced circuit array here of eight. Now, in order to keep up with all these processing units, plus the stuff for the speed modules, we need a whopping 22 uh, assemblers. So we've got them all here. Uh, now we just need to hook up the electronic circuits, plastic and copper wire. Now the copper wire is going to run out very quickly because I've stopped production of that at the moment. Um, so this is going to grind to a halt very quickly until I turn that back on. I'm going to turn that on in a minute. But let's just uh, get all of these things making it. And it's also going to eat into our electronic circuits as well. Uh, yeah, look at it how how quickly it's just yanking all that stuff away. Now, have I got these things the right way round? Two, two, four. Ah, yeah, that's fine. Um, because these these things take a little while to make, so the inserters have more than enough time to add the stuff in. So, uh, oh, let's. Uh, I, should, I wonder if I should make that a storage chest or something. Um, so yeah, there is our, all of our assemblers. Uh, for our advanced circuits. That is a massive production lab. I even had to route all the, the liquids around it. Uh, oh, I never picked up all this stuff. Uh, I'll just leave it there. A little monument. Uh, but, yeah, uh, this is good. This is a massive drain. You can see the electronic circuits and the copper wire we had have already gone. Um, and all the electronic circuits over here for the processing units have also gone. So we're going to have so you, you can see how quickly that stuff well the is taking how quickly that runs through all the resources so this over here is the new copper wire and electronic circuit production um it is essentially the same except it's been segmented now um believe it or not all those advanced circuits over there should be able to be uh should be able to, uh, their copper wire anyway, should be, their needs should be met by these four assemblers up top. Now these assemblers haven't moved, and essentially I was doing this before, I had the belts going up and the rest of them were going down into the elect electronic circuit, so I just made it a bit more formal. So these guys here, these four assemblers are going to be making, uh, the copper wire for our advanced circuits. Now I actually did the, my math a bit wrong. Earlier I said we need 4,800 copper wire for our electronic circuits alone. That was incorrect. I did the math wrong. It's actually 3,600 so it's a bit cheaper than I thought. But in total, including the four up there, we need uh, 4,320 copper cable every 80 seconds. Uh, so, <laughs> still a lot. Um, <clears throat> But one thing that was that's been on my mind for this stage of the game, and some, someone actually commented earlier on in one of the videos that uh, when you get to this sort of stage, the throughput of one belt will never match all the electronic circuits that we need because electronic circuit production is a big drain. <coughs> and I was I was aware of that despite the fact I was using that older setup, and I knew that older setup wasn't going to last. So what I've done is basically just tile it. So instead of having a whole bunch of these uh, copper cable machines feeding into a whole bunch of these electronic ones, I've got some going into s some uh, copper cable machines going into some electronic circuit machines and some more going into others and then some more going into the last. Um, I'm actually quite liking this design um, mainly because of what I've done in linking them because they aren't entirely separate from each other so they they do have a little link um, 
and it basically comes down to here. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to work. This will be this is an experiment, but basically these copper wire machines down here, uh, they will feed along into the bottom electronic circuit production facility here, and then they will head up, and then they will combine with the copper wire of these uh, of this uh, middle belt, and then it will feed along here, and then those two will combine with a third and carry on going. Now when if this thing is in full production then these I've actually made more assemblies here than I needed to uh, base, and I've even made more because technically all we need is 10 electronic circuit uh, factories to keep us going and for that I think we need 15 copper cable just for the electronic circuits. I have got for 8, 16, 24 copper cable here and 12 electronic circuits so we're, we're, we've got more, it's, the copper cable is overkill actually um, but if we're only producing a little bit of electronic circuits then I'm guessing only these ones down here are actually going to be producing copper cable uh, because it's all going to feed through and because the throughput is going to be minimal these, uh, mid, these other machines are not even going to have a chance to feed their copper onto the belts However, if the electronics, all of these electronic circuit machines are manufacturing, then these ones, their copper cables are going to get used up probably about here, which means that it will have an opportunity for this one to mix its copper onto the belt here, carry on going up, and then that will get used up probably about here, and this one will be like for surplus. So they'll be feeding into each other. That's the hope anyway. I don't know how it's going to work, um, but we're going to find out. Um, so let's, oh wait a minute, I needed that. So let's fire this thing up because we're out of cable and we're out of circuits. The rest of our factory demands it. I don't think I put any lights down on this which was a bit stupid of me. Uh, I'll do that in a minute. Well there's some lights, not many. So there we go, there is our, was it 28 all in all? Yeah, 8, 6, 10, 24 plus 4 at the top, 28. Uh, copper cable assemblers um, and they're all building up so now we need the electronic circuits now hopefully this will build up very quickly we're already getting a bit of a torrent of electronic circuits coming through and it's feeding into everything that was running down our base is producing nothing but uh, the the circuit stuff right now. Before I started this there was absolutely nothing being produced and I don't see any interruption in production which is good. Looks like our copper cable is actually keeping it up. The only problem I might see is down here. In fact the one thing I've noticed is that these long-handed inserters are actually slowing things down a little bit there's a very small gap between one electronic circuit being made and another. Um, <clears throat> I don't. <coughs> oh, sorry. I couldn't really think of any other way around that other than spacing these out more and have the iron going down the middle. Um, and just because I I need the two fast inserters for feeding the copper cable in. Um, but considering that we have more factories here than we need. It should account for that. Uh, it's not, as I said, this isn't 100% efficient, but what I don't want it to be efficient, I want it to be effective. And it looks like this is effective. I, th this is constantly churning out the electronic circuits, and the copper that we have flowing in here is not being taxed too much, which is even better. I was actually quite worried that there was a good, this was going to be too much, but it looks like it's keeping up just fine. Um, so we are now making, let's see the production tab, we are making 1.3 thousand per minute. Let's, we've been running for a minute, so let's just, um, let's see, I'm looking at my math here, where is it, <coughs> electronic circuit sheet, where are you, uh, where are you? 
Is it on this side? I wish you guys could actually see this. Ah, there we go. Um, because I only need 1,080 every 80 seconds. So how much would that be per minute? Uh, let's get my phone. Do some math. Math with Misfit and Factorial. <laughs> right. So let's see. So we need 1,080 circuits every 80 seconds. So 80. So that should be 810 per minute. Uh, we are already making more than that. So this thing works like a charm. We even have extra circuits to do for <coughs> other things. So we might actually be able to run a few things in the background while, whilst all this stuff is going on. I don't know for sure. Um, I was also kind of worried that the throughput of this might not be enough. But I think it's actually keeping up okay. Um, of course, the base is churning all of these stuff out. I mean, how, how much is how much iron and stuff? Look at that. We're making over 4,000 cable a minute. That's brilliant. Actually, I think that's actually more than I was actually uh, actually wanted. Okay, cool, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Um, circuits, are they getting down here good enough? Because this is where most of them are going. And yet, it looks like there is def there's enough for the machines to continue to op continually operate, which is good. And how is this thing running? Well, everything's backed up, and it's not fully producing it because it's all working its way through. But yeah, I think we're good. I think the base is prepped. We we so so far in preparation for all this stuff, we have increased our circuit production to no end. We have in we. Uh, redesigned the smelt the smelting area and then we've beefed it up with beacons um, we've buffered up a whole bunch of resources in order to do this we've uh, tried we sorted our oil supply this isn't doing anything because I haven't put inserters on it that's a bit silly of me wow we haven't even unlocked this this base's full potential oops what are you doing get out of there There we go. <laughs> but I think this 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 belt mixing idea is actually working quite well. Um, so because as, as, as you can see here, when it gets to this point, h half of the copper wire is already used up just by these machines. So it needs a refill. So that's where this line comes in. Um, so the basically this stuff here is just a surplus going into there, and same for here as well. But uh, I think we have more than more than what we need. One thing I'm worried about is if the copper cable up here is being taxed too much and it doesn't look like it. So, yeah, we're good. We are absolutely good. We are swimming in copper and electronic circuits. So, yeah, I think next time we will start setting up the uh, the module factory. And then we can actually start turning out uh, module 3s, which is exactly what we need for so the, so the cool stuff like this. Power Armor Mark II. We might actually be able to make this next time. Um, so it will take <coughs> a little while. Actually, it won't take too long. Um, if this if this works the way that I want it to, then we could make this in a matter of like 10 minutes. Nice. Um, and then there's not a lot, of le a lot left to research, actually. Um, there's some stuff with combat robotics. There's some couple of other things for the armor that we never really tried out. And of course there's the car and the tank that which we never tried out as well. So uh we'll definitely research them before we finish up the series. But we are rep quickly approaching the end of the series. Um because once we've done the rocket defense that's pretty much it. There's nothing else to do in the game except for build a bigger base. Um but yeah that's it from me today. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I shall see you next time.